Patricia Marshall Harris, a nutrition and healthy lifestyle consultant and the founder of Classy and Essential Nutrition. As one of nine siblings, mother taught us about eating healthy, and I've been eating healthy ever since. When traveling internationally, I seek to learn about different cultures and their approach to food. Over the years, I've done countless cooking demonstrations for corporate and community-based groups. I've longed to share my knowledge about food, nutrition, and living a healthy lifestyle, and to share my recipes, which are delicious, meat-free, plant-based, to a broader audience. On Dishing with Patricia, our featured guests have been dishing about their food experiences and current events. Episodes have been informative, entertaining, and we've had fun. Today, I'll be preparing a few of my favorites. I just want to remind you that food is our most natural medicine and it's spiritual too. So let's get started. Let's get started with what's going on with me. I'm going to dish today with you about how food is medicine and how food has been instrumental in my life in my earlier years. And also, I want to remind you that food is also very spiritual because my mother brought us up to believe that food gives life. And what is life if it's not spiritual to you? So I'm going to start dishing first with a water-infused watermelon. And the reason why I chose watermelon is because it's the summer season. Not only does water will help you to rehydrate yourself, watermelon is 92% water. It also has vitamins, has minerals, and it's high in fiber. Let's get started. I'm gonna show you how I make my water-infused watermelon. First of all, I always, when I buy my watermelons, I always take it off the rind. Nothing worse than coming in and there's rind in your sink. So whenever you have a watermelon, I buy two of them. I buy one that I'm immediately going to slice and then put in my refrigerator, and then the second one, I'm going to sit it over for later in the week once it's, once it's ripened and I've gotten rid of the first one. So how I start is I cut just the, in the middle on each side of the watermelon. Just be careful not to cut yourself. So I take this off, excuse me, and I just sit that there. Then I take another part, the other part of the watermelon. Here you go. So what you have now is just really the meat of the watermelon. Look how good that looks. So what you should do is just take all of this melon off of the rind. And the middle section is what I typically put in the fridge. So I take all of this off. But do you see how much melon is still on the sides? That's the part that I use to make my infused water. I get this, I take it off, take it from here. Here's some more, because if you cut into this even further, it's not going to be very sweet, but this is infused water, so you really don't want to use the meat of the um, watermelon because you wanna save that as a treat for your family. But a lot of time you discard this part of the watermelon and it's not necessary. So I'm gonna take all of this, take this out of here, and I'm just gonna start adding the pieces into the blender. I'm gonna cut this part off. And it is so refreshing when your guests are over and you have something to serve them. And then later on, with this, with this you can also um, make it a cocktail if you want. Some people want a, a cosmopolitan, some folks want a margarita. But still, see how much of red is still here? Cut this a little more so that it can blend into the blender. So here are the parts here. This is not quite two cups, but if you were doing this at home, I would, I would chop up two cuts. So you put it in the blender. Okay, there you go. Ooh. Sorry, there you go. So 
start it on low. Let it pulsate. It was solid and now it's a liquid. So what I want you to do now is to add some water to this. Just about, maybe about a liter of water because you're just, you want the taste of the watermelon. You don't want it to be overbearing. So you just want to just be able to taste it. So. We're gonna put this, we're gonna blend this, pulsate it again. And now I'm going to add some lemon juice, some fresh lemon juice. Here's the lemons. And the reason why I like lemon, because lemon has some digestive properties. It also aids you in losing weight. If your stomach is upset, I like hot lemon water sometimes. And then in the morning times when you wake up, also have some fresh lemon water. Or ginger, I like to wake up and have some fresh water. So that's in there. Now I'm going to add in some agave. Because remember, I did not use the meat in the center of the watermelon. I used closer to the rind, even though it was very, it was still red, it's not going to be as sweet as the middle of the um, watermelon. So just add about a tablespoon of agave. And remember, it's two cups of chopped watermelon. So I'm sorry, I didn't measure it. I'm just, I'm eyeballing it. So once this is done, it's gonna be really refreshing. I want you to pour this over a pitcher of ice. You can put it in your glass. Let's do this. Let's because I want you to put it in the glass over the ice because I want you to put your mint inside of your glass. And with your straw, just kind of just move the mint around because you want to release the oils. Mint also has um, properties that will aid in your digestive system. Now, cucumbers, most of you don't know that cucumbers are in the same family as zucchini, and it's a flower. It's not a vegetable, it's a flower. So I just want you to remember that. So what I wanna do is just, I wanna just move this around a little bit, just, just to help it to release its oils. Plus it looks nice as a garnish in your pitcher. Even without me having added anything in here, just look at the two colors between the ice and the um, mint. Very refreshing. So let's pour this over this ice. Look how pretty that looks. Pour this over here. Add a slice of cucumber. Take a little bit of your sliced lemons, add that. Just take a little small sprig of your mint. So this is what infused watermelon looks like. Let me taste it. So hold on. This is so good. I hope you guys are enjoying this as my audience. This on a day like this, on any day in the summer months, this is going to be refreshing. My next dish that I'm going to make is a corn and lima bean succotash. That goes back to our Southern roots. My mother was born and raised in Mississippi and then later on in Tennessee. And succotash was one of our favorite dishes. But you also have to realize that this is the summertime Corn is in abundance, and you should always buy your fruits and vegetables when in season. Squash is added into the succotash, which is zucchini. Zucchini is a flower and is a summer squash. So this is the time that we need to be purchasing these type of items, not only because it's seasonal, but you can also can control your footprint of where your food comes from. You should always try to buy local ingredients. That way you know who your purveyor is and you know whether they're using pesticides and things of that nature. And you can control where you get your food. 
always remember your food is your medicine. Corn is high in fiber. Um, zucchini can help in your blood, lowering your blood sugar. It improves your vision. Always pick your foods based on things that are going on in your life. When I'm cooking dinner or if I'm having friends over, I always ask them, is there anything going on in their lives? And then I fix my foods accordingly. If some folks never saw how corn looks, this is how it looks when it's not in a bag in the freezer section, off the vine. So I'm gonna give you the ingredients for this succotash. You're gonna have Vidalia onions, you have zucchini, you have cherry tomatoes, you have olive oil, and you have um, shallots. Here are your lima beans, and here is your garlic. So I want to save the milk of this corn. And what I mean by milk, when you slice your kernel just halfway, you see that? Let's put this here. So I'm gonna show you. So you just slightly, take it like that. Don't go all the way, just halfway. And when that's over and done, this is how it looks. Now watch this, you see that right there? That's called the milk of the corn. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a corn buttermilk dressing for my next dish. So I'm going to use this corn that I have here. We've already um, taken it off of the cob. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna make this dish for you. But later on, I'm going to use the milk of the corn to make a salad dressing. So let's move over here to our induction, um, just a little small tabletop stove that we could put this in. So I'm gonna start with, I have a half, of, I have a cup of Vidalia onions. So in case some of you forgot, I have some of my audience that they're gonna be cooking along with me. So remember, put your oven, it's a stove top. Don't have it on high, don't have it on medium. So just put the onions inside of your skillet with your olive oil. And here's my olive oil right here. I'm gonna add that over there. Then I'm going to add um, my zucchini. This is a half a cup of zucchini, chopped zucchini. This goes into the skillet as well. It's not gonna take long for this dish. I'm going to add um, some shallots. And we're just gonna get this started. It's really, really quick. It's colorful. It's that time of year when you're having family and friends over. And this is going to be a quick dish. Your lima beans have protein in it. The shallots has fiber, calcium, minerals. Always remember when you're buying and you're purchasing your foods, you want your foods to be nutritious. Once your food is nutritious, the rest of it, all of, everything says it. How you present the food, the benefits that your family's going to get from it. So, I mean, it's quick. What I want you to do is to eat your foods as close as you can get from their natural state. I know that today that we're eating a lot of plant-based foods as alternative, you know, when I have a vegetable burger, I want a veggie burger that actually tastes like vegetables. I don't want, I don't want to have a, a veggie burger that tastes like I'm eating a hamburger. That's not the purpose for me. So we have to be careful in eating our plant-based alternatives. So let's go and check this out, see what's going on with this stovetop. So I'm gonna add the corn. And this is about 30 minutes to cook. This is really, really fast. So this is some fresh cilantro that I'm cutting up for you. We're gonna add this in. This is some tarragon. Tarragon helps you sleep. It also aids in, it has antibacterial properties in it. I can't remind you enough that when you're cooking and when you're eating, always add fresh herbs, add seeds, nuts, 
all of these things to your food. Your food should be colorful. Don't just have it looking just all yellow or all green or anything like that. So let me continue to mix this in. This is just about ready. What I'm going to add now is um, my tomatoes. So you have a cup of cherry tomatoes that I'm going to add in. And then I also have a cup of lima beans that I'm also going to add in. When I finish with this, this is, look, look you guys, this is like really, really pretty. The red and the um, orange and yellow tomatoes. Cooked tomatoes have a antioxidant, lycopene. Lycopene is known for aiding in fighting cancer. So always, always think about that when you're having your tomatoes. You benefit from it when they're raw, but when they're cooked, it really releases the beta carotene and the lycopene that is much needed for you. So this dish is, this dish is ready. That is really nice. Look how pretty that looks. That is going to be so good so good and I'm just going to just leave it right there and put this over here and then I'm just going to garnish it with some more cilantro just you know put a little bit up on the top and um, this is my corn and lima bean succotash I hope you enjoy this for your family make it for your family this summer nothing like fresh vegetables so give me a minute and I'll be back. Welcome to Patricia Dishing on Past Episodes. Hi, I'm the Patricia part of Dishing with Patricia. So I'm so happy that you're here. And this is our seventh episode leading into what I want to talk about. So the very first episode, I had A. Bruce Crawley as my guest. And the reason why I chose Bruce as my guest is that Bruce is my husband. But not only is Bruce my husband, he's my champion. When I, he and I met a number of years ago, he said, you're bigger than this. You should be telling people about what you do. You should be telling them about how important food is to you, how important it was that you sat in the kitchen with your mother and how she gave you this knowledge of wanting to talk about food and how it impacts your life. So, in about five seconds, we're going to give you a clip of Bruce and I interaction on episode one. What do you like most about the business that you're in based on the decisions that you started? Well, I, what I liked about it was that there was um, an absence, I thought, of um, internal politics. In, in corporate America, corporate Philadelphia, you think politics is bad in Washington, D.C., there's internal politics and corporate politics in virtually every major corporation. And when people are writing a memo, they've got to decide who to make copies to, who not to make copies to. Even now with emails, you know, they send an email to you, but they send blind copies to 10 other people. It's always uh, people pitting one against the other and, and trying to compete for advantage. And I said, well, I'll leave and I'll start my own business. And one of the good things about starting my own business was I thought that I could bring in African Americans as employees, as partners, as team members, as as um, vice presidents. I mean, you could make them a vice president, although it was hard to become one in large corporate America. But we we did that, and I was glad to do that. What did you think there that there was a need that this should be done? Tell me what your thoughts are. Well, well, for our firm, we always did business with and for people who needed our service, but with and for people who sometimes couldn't afford the service. And we did pro bono service, especially for not-for-profit organizations, um, organizations that were trying to start up in the community that didn't have any awareness, nobody ever heard of them, uh, the newspapers wouldn't talk to them. We would try to do that for them for free, for pro bono. We didn't charge them anything. Uh, and um, for small businesses, I always wanted to to get involved with starting more African-American businesses because I saw how few African-Americans there were 
in uh, large corporate America as a percentage of the total employee base. So my second guest was Lorena Marshall Blake. Lorena is the um, president of the Independence Blue Cross Foundation. Lorena is a phenomenal woman. But most important, I wanted to share my excitement about dishing with Patricia. And I thought Lorena could bring that energy out. So let's get going. Let's see it. This is truth telling time. It really is. Uh, again, I go back to another favorite quote um, by one of my sheroes, uh, which is Dr. Maya Angelou. And I, I just think it, it it, it just speaks over everything, uh, where she said, people won't remember what you said, they won't remember what you did, but they will always remember how you made them feel. It is so important to me that people realize that they are important, that they matter, okay? That they have voice, all right? And, uh, and, it, and it takes me back to even being the president of the foundation, because the, I have the privilege and honor of representing people that may not necessarily have a voice, but to get to empower them through what through healthcare, through through, through um, if you want to be a nurse, you know, if you've got some challenges with regard to addiction, you know, how how do I get them to be healthier? So so that's that's important to me. That's what makes my heart what is it hum and beat. March was colorectal cancer month. I had to get Kim Hall Jackson to be my third guest because that was March. Kim has a story and I felt that it was important that we heard her story, her journey that she went on from learning about having colorectal cancer to being a survivor. So let's hear what Kim has to say. I learned that African-Americans and other communities of color have a higher mortality rate for colon, colorectal cancer. And I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to be involved as an advocate and offer as much support and information as I could about my journey. At what age should we start being concerned, be, being, being our own advocates? Absolutely. Trying to have a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. um, First of all, you need to go to the doctor. You, I, that thing of, you know, mm -hmm. if I don't know, I'm okay. Right. That's not good. Not true. So tell us, at what age should we start being concerned as an African-American person? Sure. Um, so the standard testing was 50 years old. Um, for African-Americans, it should have been 45. Now the age has dropped to 45. I say for African-Americans, we should start at 40. You know, I'm the type of person I've had mammograms since I was 36 because there were lumps, there were tissues there, and I had concerns. Uh, I had fibroids when I was younger. I had tests. I had concerns. So I've always been pretty much an advocate for physicals, talking to your doctors, getting second opinions. Um, you know, doctors have a lot of patients, but you only have one life. Why not? Jerome Shabazz was my fourth guest. Jerome is a community activist. Jerome participates in making his community different. He's making his community different by helping build a community center where folks can go and learn how to eat healthy, changing the environment from a toxic community to a healthy community. Check out this clip from episode four. Do you think that this should be something that should be taught in the educational system, within the school system itself? Absolutely. The importance of your environment, what goes on, how you can help control it, and how you can change everything just strictly by making a change. We have a three-part approach to everything we teach at Overbro. What is the issue? Why should you care about the issue? And what can you do about it? Because we're in a city like Philadelphia where yeah. 24, 20 to 7 percent of the people have poverty. And so therefore, we have priorities that are not necessarily connected to environment. We may be worrying about where the next meal is coming from and how we're going to secure our economics. So we make the issue of environmentalism a reality that helps people to see that if I can take better care of my health, if I can take better care of the environment around me, it can affect my economics too. 
Because when you think about the three things that weigh people down, whether it's mortgages, whether it's student loans, healthcare is right up there. And the more preventative things that we can do, the better it is that we can reduce those costs and reduce the burden of, of, of inappropriate health care. Episode five is fabulous. My guest was Lucinda Dunkauf. Lucinda is a serial entrepreneur, but guess what? She got capital funding for each of her vendors. Check out her clip, see what she has to say. Bruce says that Lucinda is what you call a serial entrepreneur business person. So tell me, what did you take from those life lessons? Because Bruce often mentions some of the lessons that he learned from karate that has helped him in his life. So tell me, how did you transcend? We could do a whole show about this okay. topic, but I will, I will t say two things. First of all, yes, so when you say a serial entrepreneur, serial with an S, yes. um, what that means is that I've done this over and over again. Yes. So Above Board is my sixth company backed by venture capitalists, so outside professional investors who invest in my companies, I grow them and then we sell them, with the goal being to make money for, for the investors as well as um, for ourselves and add Correct. value for clients and all the rest. And so one of the things, it's actually the same deal, is that I think when you shift your mindset to the journey rather than the destination, it's exactly the same. So you don't get a black belt and stop. You get a black belt and that prepares you for the next degree. So how do you take that business concept into actually starting a business and then getting funding? Mm -hmm. So this is probably the question I get asked the most by people who haven't done this before. And it's gonna sound um, silly almost, but the answer is you just do it. So like, there's nothing that's gonna happen. I'll see people, um, you have to have a bias to action. You have to actually do something. Yes. So you've done, I know, a good amount of philanthropic, right? Yes. Sort of um, activities that most people go like, wait, you're going to do something in Ghana? How? Who do you know? What? Yes. What do you do? You just start. You make a phone call. You know, you call, so you find someone on the internet, and you send them an email. You literally just start. That's really? how you start. And then the reality is your idea is going to meet the market, and you are gonna find out you're wrong. Every time, 100% of the time. You might be, you know, hopefully you're generally have some right things, but you're gonna be wrong. So the idea is that you go to market, you try to invest the minimum you can, right? So any, right, any way you can manage to do something um, without spending any money or time, you do, in order to get the market feedback. Then the market says to you, oh, well, the way you have this is wrong, the way you have this is right, and that directs what it is you do. June is Black Music Month. Who else could we get but Deanna Williams? We wanted to hear her story. I wanted to learn all about Black music, where it's been and where it's going. Check out the clip. Tell me about June Black Music Month. Yes. Yes, June Black Music Month is now in its 42nd year, Patricia. And I gotta give a big shout out to my, my one of my best friends, literally when we were getting ready to start shooting, uh, he called me, uh, Kenny Gamble is one of my favorite people on the planet. We have three adult children and one six and a half year old grandson, yes. Luke Gamble, that I mentioned earlier. But Gamble and I, when we were together, thought that it would be great and Originally, it was Kenny's idea to have a month, much like Black History Month, yes. which is in February, but a month where we spend concentrated focus and energy on the recognition and celebration of music creators and consumers. It's not just all about the artist. It's about the songwriters, the producers, the engineers, the videographers, the journalists, any and everybody involved with the preservation and the promotion of Black music. Episode 7. I was a nervous wreck. I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull this off by myself. And I thought about it. This was my time. I needed to tell you folks about food is medicine. Check out the rest of episode seven. My last recipe is fabulous. Please join us next time with Patricia dishing on past episodes. Welcome back. Before I start this third dish that I want to share with you guys, which is going to be a pasta 
with radicchio, arugula, and it has some of the um, corn milk that I did from my earlier segment. I just want to thank you guys for this journey that I'm on, and I want to take you with me. So what I did was I took all of the husk off of the, um, the um, peel off of the corn, and I made, this is it. This is the milk of the corn. This is after you slice some of the kernel off, and this is the, um, the milk of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the blender. I can't find my spoon. For some reason, I get here and I can't find things. But I'm going to put this in this little blender right here because I'm making corn buttermilk dressing. And the reason why it's going to be a buttermilk dressing is because I'm adding vinegar and I'm adding lemon to this dish. This is the milk from the corn, which is half a cup. I didn't forget about you guys that are at home. They got my recipes and you're going to be cooking with me. So this is half a cup of corn milk. Then I'm going to add my, let's, let me glance at this. This is a tablespoon of lemon juice. This is olive oil. This is white balsamic vinegar. This is maple syrup. This is a tablespoon of maple syrup. It was a tablespoon, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Two tablespoons of the balsamic vinegar. And then, for those of you that are, not, that are not aware, that haven't been following my cooking segments and dishing with Patricia with my guests, this is vegan mayo. So all of this goes into this little blender here. So I'm going to put the top on here and I'm going to blend it. I'm going to put some air into this. So this is a vinaigrette that's creamy because blending it adds air, it emulsifies, and it becomes richer. So let me just put this in here. Just quickly, if you had a larger blender that you needed to put it in, that's fine. This is just, just real quick. And it's really, really good because of the tart and the sweetness of the lemons and the balsamic vinegar, but the sweetness of the corn and the maple syrup really brings this dish out. So this, what I've just made, is going to be the dressing for my pasta. So I have gluten-free pasta. Gluten-free pasta is good because some people cannot digest wheat. So this is gluten-free. It helps with those that have diabetes. It lowers your glycemic numbers. When you're eating white pastas, it's gonna raise your glycemic numbers. They're not good for you. If you have anything in your cabinets white, get rid of white bread, get rid of, rid of white rice, get rid of white flour. This is made with quinoa. It is a gluten-free flour. Quinoa is, a, is an ancient grain. Also, it's a protein. So this is what I have right here, penne pasta. So what I'm going to do is add my two tablespoons of olive oil just to coat the um, pasta. Because remember, it's a salad. Just going to mix it around a little bit. Um, if you're doing this at home, don't overcook your pasta. You want it al dente. That means it has some, a little bit of resistance to it. Um, when you're when you're cooking with gluten-free pastas, they don't require the length of time that a regular white pasta requires. So please look after it and just be aware of it. So I'm just gonna mix this together, blend this over. So uh, my ingredients are already in there. So this is radicchio. Radicchio has a lot of, lot of, lots of minerals in it. It's nutrient rich. So what I would do, is just pull it apart, pull it apart. Most of you guys see this in your um, spring mix and you didn't know what it was, but it's radicchio. Always incorporate color in your foods. Please, please, please. So we're just gonna slice this down and just um, so it can go in because I want it to be able to coat with the um, arugula that I'm going to put in there. 
And here are some um, red, paper, red pepper flakes. I'm going to put that in there. And here is some basil. I'm going to put some fresh basil in. I'm not going to, I'm just going to break these up with my fingers. Basil, you'll be surprised, all the properties that basil has. It gives you calcium. It's high in, um, I think it's vitamin K. All of these things are important. Look it up. If you're, I mean, in today's time, you can look your things up while you're standing in the grocery store. You can say, oh, should I buy this? Should I not buy that? And make your recipe your own. I never follow a recipe to the T. I want to make it my own. And how you make it your own is to experiment. Nobody knows whether or not that you follow that recipe to the T. Forget about it. Let's, let's just keep it moving. So you see I'm moving this around. Look at the redness of that radicchio. And I'm going to add some arugula. Once again, high nutritious. Always, color gives you, means you're getting different vitamins, getting different nutrients. I want our food, as I always say, I want my food to be as diverse as I once, that I hope our society will be at one point in time. But cooking like this, this is like going to the bank. This is money in the bank. So put that money in the bank, walk away. Eat nutritious, walk away. Because this is the starting point. It's never too late to change how you eat, but it happens one change at a time. 10 pounds can change your numbers. It can take you off your high blood pressure medicine. It could take you off of your diabetes numbers, but take it one step at a time. So stop taking, stop going to McDonald's. Go another route. If every day you gotta go buy McDonald's and buy those french fries, stop, go another route. Instead of getting the french fries, try a baked sweet potato. But back to this, it's so important to remember what we eat can change our lives. So, with all these things mixed together, I'm going to put a little salt. And don't over mix this because you're gonna tear the pasta like I've been doing. I got so excited about telling you guys about how I feel about foods that I got a little excited and continued to stir my, um, my, my pasta. That was not my intent. So today, once this is, I'm finished with this, I'm going, to, I'm going to plate it now for you so you'll see how pretty it looks. And then I'm going to top it with some crab meat. This is really, really easy. You could have this salad. You could put some fresh fish on it. You could have it as a side item with chicken. So I'm going to plate this. I want you to look how pretty this is. Look at those colors. Look at that red that's on that plate. Look at that. This is good eating. And it's not a whole lot of, it's just like five ingredients. You can feed your family with this. So um, let me move this over to the side, just so we can just, I mean, look at this. This is really good, really, really good. So I'm gonna to top this with some lump crab meat. And if you want it, you could add some tomatoes to this and you could, um, if you want it, you could put some fresh um, vegan Parmesan cheese on this, have some crackers. You could even put some avocados on it. Build your salads. Now, if I was at home, I would have some seeds on this. I would have some nuts on this. When you're having a salad, don't just have a green salad. Add things to it. So this is my Dishing with Patricia audience as my guest today. I hope you enjoyed this and how food is medicine and what it's going to do for us. I relax. And I relax because I know my ancestors were here watching over me. I know my mom is proud that this is dishing with Patricia. 
But most importantly, she would be proud that I'm sharing with you guys what she taught me a long time ago. Eat healthy. Take care of your family. That's important. I can't take care of my family if I don't eat healthy. So what I want you to do is make your promise today, not just to mask up when you're out in public, but that you're going to change your life because your life is important to you. And food is very instrumental in how you live your life. So until we meet again, let's go dishing with Patricia. I can be seen on classy and essential nutrition. My recipes are going to be on my website. Thank you. Until next time. Bye.